could do that in group work settings in face-to-face -face context as well, but it's in affordance because, again, it's on record, and there's an opportunity to intervene or to support or to provide tutorial assistance, for example, on the basis of what's due, how students are responding to those particular tasks in online spaces. So constructivism alignment, and I think this is critical if we're going to move into the online space at mass scale, understanding why we set online assessments in the first place, and why students do those, and what it is that we can claim about their learning from that particular uh, uh, assessment event. <clears throat> the third theoretical perspective is the notion of assessment of qualitative difference, which in essence arises out of taxonomic approaches to student learning. Some of you will recognize, I'm sure, the Bloom's taxonomy. It seems to have had currency for a long time, and it seems still to be current. And why? Because it's a powerful framework. It tells us something about the differences in the ways in which students engage in learning. And why is it important for assessment? Because it tells us something about how we can be focused as assessors on, is it recall that is our primary basis for assessment? Often, formal written examinations at the end of the year have really that as their primary purpose. It's about getting students to demonstrate that they can remember something. We have to ask ourselves, what's the value of that? What does it tell us? How, did, how valuable is it subsequently up the curriculum for students? And how, and of course, obviously on the counter side, what can we do instead? What can we do that might be better, more long-lasting, more powerful uh, in terms of student learning? So there's that, and then finally there's the, the notion of, uh, the, the, from adult learning is the theoretical perspectives around critical reflection, which I think can be used incredibly powerfully, and I'm a convert. <laughs> which I might not have been two or three years ago, can be used incredibly powerfully in online spaces. Tasks, case studies, process, think processes can be put online for students to engage with, to be asked various reflective questions about the case study or the task, to respond to those in groups or individually, and there's a golden opportunity in those spaces for feedback to be given. Not necessarily by us. I keep trying to say, emphasize, I'm not suggesting that assessment is entirely our responsibility on our own. In fact, I think assessment in the online space can help us give a better signal about the purpose of assessment from a student development point of view. To some extent, can take away this notion about assessment inhering entirely within the academic and being something of the, of the responsibility for the, for the student, him or herself. I know we're going, I hope we're going to talk about those things because I would imagine that there will be people saying, how can we give that kind of power to undergraduate students, for example? How can we enable that kind of power for high stakes assessment, which is another key component, clearly. So what happens in the high stakes environment? How can we give responsibility for assessment to the student him or herself? Okay. Uh, by the way, and I'm coming back to this issue too, I'm not only talking about written forms of assessment here or text-based forms of assessment. I think oral assessment, group assessment, case study type assessment, multidimensional, complex activity assessment is really very well served by the online environment. I mean, kind of, there is no limit on, <clears throat> on the assessment artifact that can be placed in the online space for students to respond to. So it's more perhaps about, um, about the management of assessment activity than it is about what assessment is placed in that online space. Okay, I said I wasn't going to spend a long time on theory. Okay, that's enough. Let's move to... I'm moving now in the direction of, the per again, the purposes of assessment and then primarily asking us to think what role does assessment play in student development? Because again, at the risk of restating and overstating, I think the formative assessment space can be really useful in relation to student development. We can track, I think it is, poss it is possible, and I've done this kind of work myself in courses in, the course in, in the educational assessment and evaluation that I teach at the postgraduate level, to have students track their own development through responding to progressively perhaps more demanding or complex tasks in an online space. Not necessarily for marks, but it could potentially be for marks coming back to the Marx issue later. It's always a, an interesting topic to engage in. So what are we talking about in relation, this is for me what assessment should be about in both an ideal world and actually in a real world. It is an intentional, sequenced, guided and co-constructed learning activity. 
That's what assessment should be playing in, in terms of its purpose. That's not what assessment does typically. Assessment is typically a task which is sort of done to students. Um, it's often opaque in terms of its purposes. Students respond in a way that sometimes they know fairly well what they're going to get in terms of results and other times they're not sure at all. Not always saying that students you know, prepare for assessments well, but what I'm saying is it, it, it's often a chance-like activity. It's a high-risk high activity, and especially so in the high-stakes environment. So, sorry, I'm coming back to my first point. If, it's in an, if assessment plays the role of being an intentional sequence rather than co-constructed learning activity, the aim of which is to enable both quantitative and qualitative change. We want to see how much students know, and that builds. We also want to see to what extent do they change their either conceptions or applications and so on, either as they move up the curriculum or as they move across the curriculum. And that's another issue for staff development that we're concerned about in our own institution. The extent to which, or the lack of extent to which, Academics talk to each other about their assessment practices in a lateral way in a single curriculum. Um, again, not an accusation. We, we, we do it because we assume that both assessment and discipline activity is an autonomous event. It happens in my discipline. I don't talk to other people about what I'm doing in my discipline or subdiscipline. I think we miss an opportunity that way. We miss an opportunity in assessment too because we miss that chance to talk to one another about what's the overall goal of curriculum. How does assessment feed the ultimate aim of a particular curriculum? And we don't we lose that opportunity if we're not talking to each other. <coughs> not assuming that we don't, I'm sure there are examples here in this room where that's done very well and people spend a lot of time with colleagues talking about assessment as a practice, both online assessment and face-to-face. -face. So what is what do, what role do we play as academics in that assessment event? And how do we bring that into an online space? The mediator, in my view, and this is Vygotsky summarized in three sentences, the mediator plays the role of the aware expert, whose move and sub succeeding moves are based on the learning environment signals. So when students do assessment, whether it's formative or summative assessment, we are provided with signals about their learning, and about our own teaching, and about our assessment, for example. So at the simplest level, we might say things like, gee, I had, assessed, I had set a particular assessment activity for a particular purpose. It didn't happen like that. Students didn't understand what they were asked to do. That's not necessarily our own fault, but it gives us an opportunity to think about why it happened that way, why there was a mismatch. We have the chance to play this role as mediator. It doesn't necessarily require a huge amount of effort, and it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be in the online space online 24-7. We can set boundaries. I know my colleagues are very concerned about the online environment, about what that means in terms of being available to students. In my view, it means the same as it would mean in a face-to-face -face context. We set the boundaries. We negotiate those kinds of spaces. We, we, and part of that involves if students, and I'll come back to the asynchronous thing in a moment, if students are in, a, in my course, I am not going to respond between you know, whatever it is, midnight and... 8 a.m. South African time, if I'm in a synchronous <laughs> environment, I'm not going to respond to, to student responses and requests. I'm not immediately available, for example. Okay, so feedback in this case, and this is again a, the point I want to make about assessment in general, is both student facing and academic or lecturer facing. It is important for both parties. It's not just giving students signals. And there are many of my colleagues who, who will argue very strongly with me that feedback has, is not saying anything to me about my teaching. It's talking about students. It doesn't tell me anything about my teaching. So then, then, then the, the comeback argument to that is, well, then when you, know, when you have a 1,000 students in your class and 850 of them fail the assessment, is that all about the students? I'm not sure. I'm not, again, we don't, these are sensitive and important issues. We don't get into arguments about that, but we simply ask those kinds of reflective questions. The same could be true uh, in the online space. I think what the online space can help us do, too, is enable us to give students the chance to voice their conceptions about the assessment and whether they understand what they're doing. That's really important in terms of development and also in terms of shaping our final summit of assessment tasks. Okay. So in the alignment space, if we, talk, if we see assessment as about alignment, 
then I think we're looking at these three focuses and the value that they play. And these are really important, again, if we're going to move more and more into the online space. I think we are going to owe it, we owe it to students and we owe it to ourselves <coughs> to be in the online space much more explicit about what assessment does and what it's for than we might have been in the past. It's, it's simply not going to serve any purpose if we are either opaque or we believe in some cases, in, if, for my colleagues and, and certainly in my own case, if we believe that assessment is something that we kind of withhold from students, it's some kind of mystery that gets unpacked for them in a shocking surprise in a formal examination or a summative assessment task. Really strange practice. Particularly strange practice in professional disciplines where the aim, I think, is to have students really be able to self-assess and how are they going to self-assess if they don't learn how to assess? But it's also true, I think, in formative assessment spaces too because it doesn't enable development. Golden opportunities can be pre presented, I think, to us in the online space because there we have chances to really intervene. Not one-to-one -one necessarily, whole group interventions. We can participate with students, and I'm jumping the gun a bit because I'm coming to that later. We can participate with students in forums, chat rooms, on social media. <gasps> Shock horror. We can participate with students in those spaces and, and make use of those if we play the role of mediator, assessment mediator, in very strategic and very opportunistic, in the best sense of the word, very opportunistic ways. So we're not constantly online, we're not constantly engaging with students, we're engaging in very strategic and important moments where we say to students in an online space, okay, I can see from this particular assessment task that many of you are struggling with fundamental conceptions of the discipline. That's what's emerging here. You're free to debate that with me, but I'm the expert and I can see that happening. So here's some questions for you to think about. Here's some ways in which I'd like to respond to some of the conceptual difficulties you're having. Talk to one another. Give feedback to one another. Get into groups in the online space with one another. Or we organize those group, the groups ourselves and have students work in that way. Taken to the nth, by the way, and this is my particular interest in dynamic assessment. In dynamic assessment, we can orchestrate groups in accordance with the particular difficulties which students are experiencing. And then we can divide the, 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 the group of students up in accordance with some of the things that they're struggling with, because not all students are struggling with the same thing. So we know in the dynamic assessment space we can provide specific kinds of mediation and, and feedback to different subgroups of students according to the levels of either difficulty they're experiencing or conceptual struggles that they're battling. I can talk more about that in detail as we go along. I'm going to take a pause in a moment and ask people to, to ask questions or make some observations. So first of all, in alignment terms, we're looking at what is it that we want to achieve. The second thing is we're thinking about assessment as an action that involves some kind of cognitive, affective, behavioral, or other demand, demand in inverted commas. So thinking about what is it that we want, what, what is the demand that we're placing our students? It often is not just one of these, especially again in the professional disciplines. The, the, co the, the assessment activity may just as much be assessing cognition as it is assessing affect or values or behaviors, for example, or literacies. And we often don't think about those things, and I think that's another challenge in the online space. What, what we need to be doing in the online space is thinking very carefully about what is the kind of literacy that is required of students and ourselves if we're going to move from face to face to online. For some students, that's a huge leap. For us, it's sometimes a huge leap as well to think about what it means. So we need to be thinking about those issues as well. So, so, so assessment as an activity is not, to state the blindingly obvious, is not simply a cognitive event. And in some cases, the object of assessment is in fact not cognition. It's much more behavior or value or something of that kind. And how do we grapple with that and how do we structure assessment? And then the final most important challenge, which is the question about what do we claim about student learning from the assessment activity and what are the limits of our claims? <coughs> so very often we set a written task and we make a whole lot of claims about student learning that go way beyond writing. We say, well, this is demonstrated that the student you know, um, is, believes in the discipline, is going to be a postgraduate student. Um, 
is going to uh, understands the values that underpin that just on the basis of a single written task. That's really no brainer and that's again something which I think we can we can control or mediate or regulate better in an online space where we can be clearer about what assessment is doing and how it's, how it's working. Okay, I'm going to take a short break in the presentation side of this and call for questions or comments or um, observations um, from your various perspectives for a few minutes just to give people a breather. Any thoughts or comments on where I've been taking this so far? The second bit of what I'm going to do is looking more at the kind of alignment issue and then I'm going to, into the much more direct practical what do we do online that can enable some of this stuff to have substance. You're coming from a variety of perspectives. I'm not sure whether there are students in the room. Yeah. In the theoretical framing, mm. you mentioned um, adult learning mm. and critical reflection. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned about assessment of learning and assessment for learning. Yeah. Uh, towards the notion of self-directed learning. Yeah. Can you just respond on uh, on assessment as learning? Yeah. Uh, the whole notion of the student participation in the assessment mm. process. Yeah. Okay. So so what what that for me means, this question about whether excuse me, first at the at the big at the high level in my view, assessment should be playing that kind of role. In other words, assessment should enable a student to move progressively towards self-regulation um, and understanding of why they do assessment for the purpose, say, of the course they're doing or the profession they're entering and so on. So I think there we have to, and again it means talking about these things with students, we have to be spelling out all the time with students what is the purpose of assessment to what extent we're wanting to rely on them taking responsibility for their own judgments about their work, how we could, how we might, for example, for example, progressively remove the role that the formal process plays in the assessment process. But we have to be realistic. We have to say to students, there are professional standards, benchmarks, etc., and and at some level, students may not know what they do not know. So we can't necessarily have all the assessment being self-directed or student-directed, but we can, we can progressively remove, if you like, or place more responsibility for that burden on students. I think it's possible. It's difficult because the culture in higher education is one where assessment is an act done to students rather than with or, or so on. But, but certainly in the postgraduate space, I've seen lots of good examples where, student, where lecturers have made, have had students, in fact, set up their own criteria for making judgments about their work. Of course, this, the, the lecturer will mediate that. So not simply going to say, good, great, okay, if you think, you know, I'm taking it to take a silly example for a minute, in a MOOC space, massive open online, how does it go again? Ma massive open online courses. In MOOC spaces, I've seen students set up criteria where, for example, they've made a judgment that says the most important thing about this particular marking, this particular essay, is, is the font students use. Now, a lecturer's got to intervene at that point and say, don't you think that's a trivial criterion? Are there not more important things that we're making judgments about here and that you need to know and that you need to develop in yourselves as, as future learners? So we've got, to, we've got to mediate the space, but it's possible I was talking about the culture thing. I think it's a difficult thing because culturally it's not practiced very successfully. People assume, as I say, that it's, it's the responsibility of the big track. So it's a progressive task. It's a slow process. And it means talking to colleagues as well. We can't do it alone. We also can't do it alone for students because students will be <coughs> suspicious of that. They will say, but hang on. The assessment practice in my other three courses is like this. Why are you doing it the way, this way? What am I losing as a result? How are you betraying me in this space? We've got to try and you know, unburden that process as well. We've got to be realistic about this. So can you speak a little bit more about the alignment between yeah. formative and summative assessment classes? And also, um, you know, you know, you know, in terms of criteria in summative assessment classes, um, how would that align to getting credit for okay. progress in terms of things like the progress Okay, can I leave the, the, the criteria one for, because I'm coming to that, but the alignment issue, the, the concern I have about in assessment now, and might, might be, I think, amplified in the online space, is that students come to see formative assessment tasks as being play, 
and then some of the assessment tasks as being the real thing. And I think that's likely to happen even more in the online space if, if we're not careful. Because we're going to put students in, in, have students engage in various informal, formative type assessment activity in an online space, and then we're going to set an examination which is not, con not aligned with those formative purposes. In an ideal world, formative assessment contributes to the summative judgment which we make. And that is a difficult stuff. Not difficult, to, I don't mean difficult to understand, I mean difficult to practice. Because students don't necessarily also see formative tasks as important. They're kind of, uh, that's stuff that I'm not going to bother with. What's in the exam? What do I have to do to respond to the exam question? So we've got to set up a culture, I think, again individually and across disciplines, departments, etc., where formative assessment, formative assessment is just as important as any other component of what we're doing. So the alignment thing for me, to put it to summarize, is we have to be sure that this alignment applies to the entire assessment as social practice regime, not just to the summative or the formative assessments. It's difficult stuff because often, and again, we, we, we think we have more freedom in the formative space than we do in the summative space. We claim the summative assessment to be set by somebody else, uh, compliant with certain regulations and requirements perhaps in the discipline or the profession and we can't do anything about that. That's pretty sad <coughs> as autonomous academics that we feel that way. We've got to move the space into greater alignment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you mentioned that with some of the online activities they don't always need to be for marks. Yeah. But we know that often students don't participate sure. if something is not for marks. Absolutely. So my question is just so if we take the example of a discussion forum online mm. versus a discussion in class. In class, there might be some students that don't participate, but it's much easier to not participate in an mm. online discussion forum. Should we just accept the fact that half the class might not participate and give feedback to those who do engage? Mm. Or should we be trying to reflect and see different ways of improving yeah. engagement or um, trying to encourage students to, or do we just give a mark for just participating in the forum, no mm. matter what was said? I kind of, all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> we have to, I think we have to make that judgment. We have to decide, okay, what is it that, again, back to purpose, what is it that we primarily want to encourage through this particular assessment, this formative assessment? If participation is really important, then we have to, and if it takes, if it takes formal assignment of mark to signal its importance, then we have to do that in the, in the realist space. We can't be pie in the sky about this stuff. I mean, it's... All very well, we would hope, we would like that at some stage students take entire responsibility for their own assessment and make their own judgments about their learning. But it's a process and it's going to take some time to get us there. So we, we would, I think, try all those kinds of mechanisms, but go back to first principles. First principles, why are we doing this? What's it for? What's the primary? So therefore, if the primary responsibility is interpersonal communication or contrib contribution in an online space to a debate or discussion, then it's not acceptable for some students to opt out. It, they all need to be contributing. So maybe we've got to regulate that space by, offer by offering some kind of participation mark or by encouraging people to participate or by saying this, is, this has consequence. This is go back to the aims of the course. What's the point? Of, what's the affect or behavioral value of this as an assessment activity? Yeah, just, just to add to that, I think, I mean, we, we can't just put a discussion forum up and expect students to, to, to participate. We need to, there's, there's a process to draw them into that space. And they have to derive value from, from that space as well. So if those discussions and engaging with those discussions, then reflect in the, the, the sort of final assessment, they, they will participate more quickly. But it's a, it's a process, it's not a sort of, Sort of sort of point. Sure, and it, and it unfortunately it shouldn't be happening in isolation too because th then there's the chance that students see this as being particular only to this, this course and, and elsewhere. I mean obviously students are savvy, they know they can, they can work out what is going to be